Hey guys, this is Dr. Spivey and I'm here with Dr. McNair and we wanted to uh, address a, a very important topic that has happened in veterinary medicine in the past few weeks. Um, we've had a lot of questions about this over the past several weeks and we wanted to address um, the postings about the link between certain types of diets and the potential for heart disease. Um, so there have been studies that have been done that have shown some potential links uh, with heart disease and something called a beggar diet. Um, and that stands for boutique, exotic ingredient, grain free, um, and then raw. So uh, we have a couple of examples here for you today. Um, usually our grain free diets are going to have that very large um, marked on the packaging so that you can instantly recognize that these are grain free. Um, and then this is just an example of one that is not grain free um, and is um, AFCO certified. So um, Dr. Venere is gonna explain kind of what this heart disease um, stuff is all about. So the heart disease that you know caught the attention is something called dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM is kind of our shorter acronym for that. So dilated cardiomyopathy is a very specific heart condition that we really only see in certain breeds. So we see this in Great Danes, and Dobermans, and Weimaraners. That's pretty much it. So one of the things that cardiologists start to see is seeing a little poodle with dilated cardiomyopathy um, or with it in breeds that just have never been documented to have this. So it started catching a little of the suspicion of why are we seeing more of this? And that's where an investigation went with diet and we're seeing a link that some of these patients are on these beggar type foods and developing this very specific heart condition that in years past we've never documented in this breed. So there's definitely been a change in a trend for this. So that's where all this research has stemmed from is the cardiologist seeing that trend. Um, so. Yes. So, um, for example, uh, I've had multiple clients ask me, I've been feeding my dog grain-free food, should I stop? And the answer is yes. Um, so while we do not know the exact link, um, some think that there may be uh, a decrease in the ability of the dog to absorb the taurine that's in the food because of the different exotic ingredients, um, but we're still not quite sure. So because dilated cardiomyopathy can be such a devastating disease, um, it is our professional opinion that why take that risk? Um, dogs are not allergic to grains. Um, very, very, very unlikely. Um, their allergens stem from the protein source. So the chicken, the beef, the turkey. Um, so that's what we want to address. If you have your dog on a very specific diet, say for skin or GI disease, we want to address those proteins, not the grains. So would I feed my dog a grain-free uh, diet? Absolutely not. Um, and so we do at this time recommend that you do um, opt to, again, select from that AFCO website um, from those uh, foods that are guaranteed uh, as very high quality and we don't have to worry about that chance whether that is a small or a large chance, why take it? Yeah, so definitely agree with that, especially as dilated cardiomyopathy is a really scary condition that we can't necessarily pick up on an exam. So this is a heart disease that doesn't commonly cause a murmur, and that's the best way for us to catch a lot of early heart diseases. Um, it's something that there are some lab work tests between looking at taurine levels, looking at something called BNP, which is a heart stress hormone, can help us screen, but those aren't foolproof. The only 100% way to know your dog doesn't have dilated cardiomyopathy is an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart to physically look at those chambers. So with that being so scary, and again, you may not catch it till it's more advanced and they do start showing clinical signs, um, avoiding these foods I think is the best option right now. If you're looking for more information about this, you wanna make sure you're looking at a really reliable source because this is a really hot issue. You know, we're very particular about nutrition. A lot of people have favorite brands, favorite foods, um, and it's something people can get really hot and heated about. So you wanna make sure you're reading a reliable source. So really good sources, you can go to the FDA itself. This is a federal agency. Um, this is documented and, and good proven based science. You can look at AFCO's website or AAFCO. They help you also understand nutrition, what things mean on a label, you know, what is chicken byproduct, what is ash, what are these things, because a lot of those words sound worse than what they really mean. They're actually good basis of nutrition. Um, the other place, there's a wonderful Facebook um, that was started by veterinarians. So again, they're the moderators for that group, so they know what they're talking about, and they are updating that as more and more research is happening. But this is going to take some time. You know, this is a really big thing going on now. So for right now, I'm going to be cautious, avoid these diets, and wait till we have all the information, because there's plenty of other diets and options that we can do. So I think this is our behind the scenes. Um, so if you guys have questions, you know, again, contact us anytime. Absolutely. There's a lot of information, but we're happy to help. Um, and hopefully you had a great day. Thanks. Thanks. Bye guys.